Hey, welcome back. I want to talk to you a little bit about uh, the oil pump today. This is a small block Chevrolet we got here, and this is our, our oil pump. Now, the oil pump on a Chevrolet is a press-in tubing. You got to you got to press this in. We have a special tool we hook on here for, for pressing that in. Once we get that in, and I usually put a little bit of Loctite on there. Some guys will weld this on. It's probably a good idea to weld it. If, if this was a higher RPM engine or a performance engine, I would probably be welding this in as well because real high RPMs have a tendency to make things vibrate and come loose, and I've seen these pickup screens come out. However, on a stock, basically stock engine like this, I've never seen one come out, as long as it's in there securely, and I put a little Loctite in there to, just for a little extra insurance, it probably wouldn't come out anyway. One of the things we need to do is we need to make sure that our bolt is not too long for the application. Now, if you look at this motor here, there's a, the rear main cab is what accepts the bolt for the oil pump. It goes in there. The depth of that bolt hole is important. Depending on the year of your block, the depths of this hole were different. Now, on this one here, I can look in here and I can see the back side of the main bearing. So this hole is actually drilled all the way through to the main bearing. And so it's, it's down in here. So what I want to do is I want to measure that to make sure, because if I put this bolt in there and it's too long, I'm going to bottom out. I'm going to be tightening this bolt up against my main bearing. So I need to measure that. I have a set of dial calipers here, and these have a depth gauge on them. The depth gauge is really helpful in measuring the depth of that hole. So what we'll do is we'll run our depth gauge out. And I'll put the bottom of my depth gauge, I'll just bottom it out, run right the bottom of the hole like that. And then I just take my calipers down like this. And I just kind of eyeball this until this measuring surface here on the calipers is about even with the machine flat spot or this pad where the oil pump's going to sit. And that tells me the depth of my hole right there. Then we're going to take our oil pump. we got our oil pump here. We've got our, I'm going to go ahead and lock this so it doesn't move on me. So I've, I've got the calipers locked so my depth is there. And then we take the bolt that we're going to use. And we just put the bolt into our hole. Now I take my calipers, and I just compare how deep that, that bolt is to the depth of my hole here. And I, I make sure, now you can see that. You can see that with my bolt in there all the way, I still have some room there. So that bolt is not going to bottom out. I know that I'm not going to have a problem with the bolt smashing into the main bearing because I measured it. Once you get that done, Another thing we want to do is a couple of different kinds of oil pump drive shafts here. This is the stock factory drive shaft. And this basically, this goes up to the distributor. And this basically hooks in here and it drives the oil pump. Well, there's a little plastic retainer that comes in the gasket set that goes on here. And then you kind of drive this in here and put it together. The plastic retainer doesn't really hold the shaft in place. Once it's installed in the motor, the shaft is actually held between the oil pump and the distributor on the other end. However, what I've what we've discovered with building these motors is this setup has a tendency to make the shaft kind of unstable, and it will actually kind of wobble around in here, especially with a high volume oil pump. This is not a high volume pump. Melling actually recommends that you use this drive shaft with a high volume pump. This has a, a steel sleeve that's riveted in. We put that in there, and it's a lot more stable. Even though this is not a high volume pump, I still like to put this this higher grade uh, oil pump intermediate shaft or drive shaft in there. It's just a little extra insurance. It gets rid of the plastic. I've seen these plastic retainers come apart and break and get sucked up into the pickup screen, so I don't really like to use those. Another thing we're going to do is I'm going to pull this pickup screen, it's pressed in there pretty tight. But you see how I've got it at this pronounced angle? I'm doing that on purpose. I'm going to go ahead and put my gasket on. Set your pump down on the pins. So there's a couple dowel pins there. 
Now this pump should slide down easily onto those pins. It should drop right on like that. If that pump doesn't drop down, if it kind of binds up here, don't, don't pound it down on there. Sometimes these dowels will get a little dinged up or bent. You need to kind of work with those and straighten them or whatever you need to do so that this pump just drops down easy onto its machine surface. Some guys use a gasket here. I never do. These machine surfaces are really flat. I've never had an issue with them sucking air. So we're going to go ahead and put the pump on. We know our bolt is not going to bottom out. So I'm just going to run the bolt down. I'm not going to torque it at this point. I'm just going to snug it up so that pump is kind of sitting there and snug. Now we need to set the depth of our pickup screen. The depth of our pickup screen is important. The screen needs to sit about a quarter inch off the bottom of the oil pan. The way that I do that is I put the gasket on that I'm going to use, and then I take the oil pan that's going to go on the engine, if I can figure out where I put it. We're going to set our oil pan right on top of here, and what our oil pan is going to do is it's going to push that down until it's just on the bottom of the pan. So here's our pan. You can see obviously that the pan is sitting up against that pickup screen. It's not going down here. So we're just going to take it very gently, just kind of push that down. And just put, push the pan right down onto the gasket. Now what I've done is I've got that, I've got that pickup screen sitting against the bottom of the pan. Well that's still not the right depth. We need to make sure that we get it right. We just use that as a reference, so then you carefully take your pan off. And we need that screen to sit about a quarter inch above the bottom of the pan. So we're just going to take this, and we're going to move it just about a quarter of an inch right there. And that should be the depth that you need it to. Once you get that done, now your pickup screen is set. The, the, the depth of that screen is actually very critical. We're going to take our oil pump drive shaft, and this shaft will just stick it on here, on the pump, like so. Put your drive shaft in the hole, let it fall down on the pins, and we're going to put our, our bolt in, but I like to put a little bit of oil on these bolts. I don't want to put them in dry, so just take some little some spray oil. Run your bolt down in there, and once you get your bolt run down in, so you get your torque wrench and torque it to 50 pounds. On this particular engine, the torque is 50 pounds. Now you want to look up the specifications for whatever motor you're working on. Don't just torque it to 50 pounds because I told you to, you know, if you're working on a Nissan or a Detroit diesel or something. You need to go by the specs. So that's basically it. Once you get those steps done, make sure that the height of the pickup screen is right. Put a little assembly lube in. We're going to prime the pump later with the drill before we start the motor, but it's a good idea to have a little bit of assembly lube or oil or something in here initially. Get the right pickup tube in there, torque the specs, and then you can go ahead and finish putting your oil pan. The rest, of course, make sure that everything is torqued again. Before I put the pan on, I go over every one of my torques to make sure I didn't miss anything, and then we can go ahead and put our oil pan on. But that's just a couple of tips on the oil pump. I hope it helps you. Um, if you have any comments or questions, feel free to ask. I'm available uh, most days, so if I don't respond to you right away, if you ask me a question, give me a couple days to respond. But I, I do uh, uh, check it quite often, and so uh, questions are welcome. And I hope that helps you. Until next time, thanks.